Hello and welcome to this week's Productivity Enhancer. Today we're going to talk about the Vents tool in SolidWorks. And the Vents tool is a really great tool for creating complex vents like the one that you see here on the side of this computer case. This of course is probably not where you're going to want your vent. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, the flat surface will work perfectly. So if we zoom in, you can see that we have a series of ribs and spars which are created simply using the Vents tool. And all you need to do to create a vent is create a sketch with the design that you want for the vent. In this case, we have this X pattern here with all of these circles making the bullseye effect. However, arcs and lines are not the only sketch entities that we can use for vents. We can actually use the whole toolbox if we want. And in fact, we're going to create a completely different pattern on the opposite side of this computer case. So we'll spin it around and we're going to open up a sketch on this face and we're going to create a vent right here. So I'm going to get normal to here by hitting the space bar, clicking normal to. And by looking at the back side of this part, you can see that the vent is on this side. But when we go normal to this side, you can see all the points that are associated with that vent showing through. It might be tempting to use those points if you want to have a, a vent on the exact opposite side. But I would advise just setting up your own coordinate system using construction lines and then filling it in however you want. In this case, we're going to want it right dead in the center. So I'm going to grab some construction lines. And then I'm just going to go down and grab this point here. zoom out and snap it there. Let me make sure that the coincident relationship is where I want it and it is. So we're going to do the same with these corners and just make sure that these coincident relationships are okay. Looks good. And this one's snapped to the origin which is a little above so we're going to have to change that. Let's delete this coincident relationship and snap it to there we go. So now we have a nice construction line X, which denotes the center from which we can create our design. So instead of a circle and lines, let's use the center point rectangle and make a squarish vent. Now you can either match it up with these construction lines or just drag it wherever you'd like it and add the relations later. I don't want the vent quite that big, but I don't want it to line up. Let's make it a nice tall rectangle. So that rectangle is going to be the boundary of our vent. And now just to show you that it can be any kind of crazy design, let's use the spline tool and make our spars a little funky. So we'll just have it out here, maybe drops down here, and then goes to that side. And we can make another different crazy looking spline here. Let's go up, down, back up, and make that point coincident with the line. And let's make another one down here going in the opposite direction. And I'll just hit escape. And I apologize for those of you who need symmetry in your life. This one's not going to be symmetrical. Just to show you that the spars and the ribs don't have to be symmetrical sketch entities. So let's just go ahead and create some vertical lines here that will be some ribs. And we'll leave it at that. And I do want to add a circle right in the middle because there is one feature that we need to be aware of that involves a center circle. So we'll just make it tangent with these two lines here. Let's zoom in here and make sure that this line is tangent with that line. Might as well make sure that it is on this side too, tangent. There, now those are tangent relationships. And we'll zoom out and we're ready to go, exit the sketch. So we have a crazy looking design that's going to be a weird vent. So let's see how it's done. First we go up to insert, then we go under fastening feature and you can see right here we have vent. I think we can all agree that a vent isn't used for fastening However, SolidWorks puts it under the fastening feature because it uses the sketch just like a fastening feature, any of these, like the snap hook, the mounting boss, snap hook groove, etc. But we're going to choose vent. And for our boundary, we're going to choose this outer rectangle here. So let's select all of these lines. So that's going to be our boundary. As you can see, our preview automatically closes that loop and gives us a hole. If we spin around, you can see it a little better, and you can see our sketch entities looking like Medusa here in the center. But don't worry, we still get to add more to our vent. It's not just a hole in the side. So let's take a look at our vent property manager. So first of all, we have the boundary, which is the four lines that comprise that rectangle. We have face one, which is this face right here where the vent will be placed. SolidWorks automatically goes ahead and picks that up for you because that's where the sketch is. We do have the option to add draft to the vent, however it's grayed out right now. We'll revisit that in a second along with radius. 
we have a nice little feature here, the flow area. As of right now with this vent open, the area is 8,843.88 square millimeters and the open area is 100% so far. But we're gonna change that right now by selecting some ribs. So we have ribs and we have spars. It doesn't necessarily matter which sketch features you choose for your ribs and spars. We'll try both. We're gonna use uh, the ribs as the vertical lines and when we select them, you can see in our preview, those ribs are automatically created and they're set to a thickness of five millimeters by default. We can change that if you want it to be three millimeters. We can go ahead and alter that thickness and you can see that they become thinner. And now for our spars, when we click in the spars box, we can click this spline, this spline, this spline, and the circle. So our vent looks like it's coming together nicely. Let's go ahead and accept it right there. We'll revisit the property manager in a second, but I just wanna take a look right here at what we've created for our vent. It's a pretty crazy looking vent, however, it does the trick. So let's go back and edit that feature, get back into that property manager. What happens if we clear this selection and clear this selection and choose the splines for ribs instead of the spars? And then we'll choose the vertical lines for the spars instead of the ribs. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. Our vent is created and it has the same exact appearance. So once again, let's go back into the vent property manager. So we're gonna change that back. I think I like the ribs being the vertical lines and the spars being the splines and circle. So we'll go ahead and switch that around. And for the ribs, the two vertical lines. Okay, back to where we began. If we take a look at our flow area, you can see that the open area has changed. Our area is still 8,843.88 square millimeters. However, our open area is 83.62%. So now let's go down to the bottom of our property manager and you can see we have a fill-in boundary. And the fill-in boundary is a great way to get a logo on your vent. And uh, what we can do is we can select the circle and that will fill in that circle, making it ready to accept either a laser etched or a machined logo or even just a sticker. By doing that, it does eliminate the geometry inside the circle. So this spline right here and this corner of the spline there and even this corner get absorbed into that filled in area. And if you know you're going to use this specific vent again, you can always add it to your favorites by clicking on add to favorite. And we can type in here the name that we want it to be. Let's just call it the Medusa vent. Click OK. And then you can see right here under our favorites and there's that vent ready to be inserted into any future sketch without having to duplicate that geometry. So let's go back to this geometry properties box. And if you see, we have radius for the fillets here. And what this does is it takes all of the corners and adds a fillet to round them out. So let's just put a small number in there, maybe two millimeters. Once we accept that, it looks like those fillets are too big. So let's try 0.5 millimeters. And if we take a look in here, you can see all of those little edges are rounded off by 0.5 millimeters. So let's accept it. And there is our vent. So if we spin back around and take a look at our primary vent here, let's just go normal to and take a look at our vent number one. So as we can see, we have ribs and spars just like before. And in this case, our ribs are the arcs, all these circles that make the bullseye pattern. The spars are these cross lines. And again, we have the fill-in boundary as the arc here in the center. If we delete that, it just leaves it open. But I like that fill boundary being in the center, so we'll just go ahead and keep it. So we can zoom out and you can see we have two perfectly formed vents on the sides of this computer casing. And once again, we would obviously not have fans located right here and here to make use of those vents so in the real world, if you had to design a vent that was specific to a fan, first of all, you need to know the dimensions of the fan, where it's located, and you have that flow area figure available specifically so you can do some real quick analysis. So another great unused tool in SolidWorks. I hope you actually get a chance to create some vents in your own parts. If so, this feature is gonna save you all kinds of time. You won't have to do cut extrudes for each individual little compartment in, in this vent. So there you have it. Vents in SolidWorks 2013. Thanks for watching this week's Productivity Enhancer. Until next time.